Oh, hey guys. Today we're going to do a, a uh, an SSD, uh, an M.2 SSD upgrade. And uh, the model for this one here is, is the IB, uh, sorry, is the Lenovo ThinkPad, the E585 series. Um, this type here, it's actually a 20 kV as in Kilo Victor. And as you can see here, so this is a, uh, for if you want to know exactly what model you have, I mean, but on this laptop, it's actually listed right on the uh, the front side of the screen assembly anyway. So you can easily find that out. But if you want to find the exact model of what you have, you can easily just check it out through Lenovo's website also if you don't know how to identify it. Um, so the best with this laptop here is a pretty simple install, you know, uh, and a disassembly. So as long as you guys follow my cursor and just follow the other, you know, the, the main screen, as you can see, it's very, very well detailed. Um, you, you shouldn't have an issue getting the system to, uh, to do the upgrade and stuff like that. So first thing you want to do is just face your screen down, close your laptop and make sure that the screen is face down on your table. And as you can see here, these screws are all using the same screws and they don't come, they don't get removed. So once you, the whole idea is that once you've actually turned about four or five times, you will start hearing a little clicking sound. So once you hear the clicking sound for every screw that you're trying to remove or unscrew, that's the indication of it telling you that you don't need to twist anymore. So because the screw is going to actually stay into the bottom assembly, the bottom casing. So it, it's not going to fall out. So once you start unscrewing each one of them, you, if once you start hearing like a little ticking sound or a clicking sound, then that's when you know you can stop and just go to the next one and do the same for all of the other ones there. And as you can see here with this here, there's three on top, three in the middle, and then three at the bottom. So there's nine in total. So you actually have to unscrew but they will not come off. So keep that in mind, right? It will just make that little clicking sound. Once you hear that, you just stop and go to the next group. All right, so once you've done that, um, once you've done uh, unscrewing all of the nine, what you do want to do is open your laptop in this situation here where the screen is facing down and then your your keyboard top case is facing about at 80 degrees. You know, And what we're going to do here is we're going to focus on this corner here because this is where... I found it was really easy to open up and you don't even need a pry tool straight out. All you need is your thumbnail and, and that's what you're going to use. You know, if you don't have it, you can use a pry tool if you want to, but you really don't need it. And trust me, I normally use my, leave my, my nails really long for me to do this because I do a lot of disassemblies and the best pry tool is literally your, your thumbnail and your fingernail, usually your thumbnail because it's really strong and thick, right? And, uh, and then plus, you're not going to go deep into the systems and cause any error, you know, some issues because I've actually had guys that have opened up their own systems to the point where they've actually used a, a, a deep pry tool. And then the when they were scraping the edges, they went too deep and then they end up breaking other parts of the motherboard. So when you're using your thumbnail, that ain't going to happen. You know, so if you look at it here, as you can see, I literally just stuck my thumbnail in there and the thing just opened up that easily. So it's a very easy disassembly. So don't even worry about it. And, you know, once you run your thumb here, once you have it open, just run your thumb to the right hand side and just keep going and like follow here. If you follow through here, as you can see to the left side, it just opens up very easily. So just keep doing it to the middle and to the far right hand corner. And once you've done that, you're at the right hand corner here. And then once you get to the corner here, just keep going down to the bottom from the top right to the bottom right. All right. So, so that you're running your 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 thumbnail right down to the to the bottom screen assembly. So just go around the edge and just go straight down that way. And then once you've done that, you know you, you'll do the same here. See, as you can see, you go to the left side and just run your your left hand with your thumbnail and just run it all the way down to the bottom there. And then it's just very simple one, you know. And this is just a, for me to show you a different angle here for me doing it so that you can see that it opens up very simple. So it's a very well designed E585 series Lenovo ThinkPad. So thank God, because not all laptops are like that. Some are so hard to open. You, you Sometimes you have to use a pry tool and and with a lot of patience of certain brands and models. So, but this one here, no pry tools needed. And then once you've done that, what you want to do is you want to close it back up again into the first screen that we had here like that. Just close it back up. Because what you want to do here is you want to run your thumbnail around the back end here and then underneath this lip and then back to this side. And once you've done that, as you can see here, this I'll show you the picture here. You want to just lift that up here and then you start, you lift it up and round it off here and then use your thumbnail. Or you can actually use your fingernail, two of your fingers to lift it upwards. I find that if you just run it across with your thumbnail, it's just much easier. It'll just pop. You can hear it pop. You know, as you can see here, I kind of just, I, I'm just doing this for illustration purposes, but 
I, I did run my, my thumbnail across, but as you can see here, once I started lifting it after I ran my thumbnail, it just opens up very easily, you know, and bam, there you go. You know, just remove the lid. And just to make a, you know, a precautionary note, a lot of laptops don't have wires that actually are attached to the, the bottom casing, but some models do. You know, I've actually learned to not always assume that they don't have cables attached because if they do, you're going to be in deep shit just, just tearing your cables apart because I've actually done that once, only once. And I learned my lesson. I actually had to pay my motherboard guy to fix it because it was that bad. You know, because don't always assume that the cables are actually, or there are no cables attached to the bottom casing because there are some brands like Dell's and other models and other brands that actually have cables that are actually attached to this stupid bottom casing, which I don't know why they would ever do that. It's almost like they purposely trap you into that, you know, to that scenario where you're removing it and you don't expect it to be a cable attached either in the front or the back. You know, a lot of times, the one time it happened to me was actually in the back and it was a Dell. I can't remember the exact model, but yeah, that got me into cost me a little bit of money because I actually had to get it fixed for my client. You know, so that there wasn't much profit made for that one, but at least I learned my lesson. So never assume that there are not wires attached to it. Always look underneath. But if I'm telling you for this model that for the E585 series, you know, the type 20 KV that has no cables, then trust me, I wouldn't lie to you guys. You know, so what we want to do with this here, because I, I, I've had some customers or, or some, you know, watchers, you know, on, on YouTube, they wanted me to show them how to unplug the battery because they don't always feel safe by just removing the M.2. But I can tell you straight up, I've been doing this for 24 years. It's not too often I actually have to remove the battery, you know, and I usually don't to be straight out. Sometimes I might do it for an LCD screen replacement, but I don't even do that. Because the chances of you shorting uh, your, your screen is like 99.9%, .9%, you know, it's not going to happen. You know, but if you are not careful in pushing in your 30 or 40 pin LCD cable back into the new screen, then yeah, you can short it. So if you want to be able to, re if you're doing a screen replacement and you look at my disassembly process here and not really replacing the, the M.2 SSD, but are trying to learn how to open it up and disconnect the battery, then this is for you too. So as you can see here, um, this is the battery, you know, it, it, it's 45 watts. And what you want to look at it here, this is the connector here. So I'm going to show you a closer shot here. So see this black tab, it actually pops out. So I'll show you a different angle here because that's what you want to be grabbing with your thumb and your index finger. Just pinch your, your thumb and your index finger. And what you want to do is you want to pinch it and pull it back this way to the right here towards the, the, the minus symbol, as you can see here, just... Just grab the tab and just pull it. It won't rip. It won't tear apart. So don't worry about it. So once you pull that here, I'll show you here. See, as you can see, I'm pinching it with my, my thumb and my index finger and I'm pulling it back that way. And once you've done that, it comes off very easily as you can see. And then, and then, then you can actually go ahead and do what you want to do. Replace your Ram, your memory, or your, your upgrade M.2 M SSD or whatever. You know, because with this system here, as you can see here, there's an M.2 SSD right above it. And that is also a two and a half inch solid state drive for this client here. You know, so, I mean, with this one here, you don't, you know, I, I you can do it or you don't have to. But if, if you had to do unplug the battery to be safe on the safe side, you know, and if you're, you know, kind of the paranoid type, you know, you might want to do it for the M.2 SSD, the memory swap, if you're upgrading your RAM or something, or you're especially doing it for your screen. You know, that's one thing I would suggest if you don't, if you're not good or accurate at placing or pushing in the, the 30 or 40 pin sets for the cables, the LCD cables. And yes, I would highly recommend that you unplug the battery first before doing that. Because if you end up putting in your LCD cable at an off angle, just pretend that this is the LCD cable here, because it looks very, it's, it's a similar cable, right? It's just a wider cable for the LCD. So let's say that you're pushing this in, but you're not going directly in evenly from left to right, and you're putting one end in. These little pins here, if it ends up hitting contact improperly with this socket here, you can literally just short your motherboard, and there goes your system. You can't fix that, you know. But if you can even try to, I mean, there's a possibility that if you end up replacing this socket here on the motherboard, having somebody desolder that component, putting a new one, then there's a chance that you can fix it. Yes. Because I actually have my my Mac guys that do that for me when they actually end up getting shorts through liquid damage and other things. So that can be repaired. But even 
at one point when this had happened to me along like what I think 15 plus years ago once when I didn't do it um it ended up shorting the board I actually had to replace the board for my client so by even just replacing the socket doesn't always fix the issue just to let you know that right so there's a 50 50 chance you know you either go through the spending major money to get it done or you don't you know so going back to the ssd here let's go back here as you can see here there's a screw here this one here it, it actually comes out this one here doesn't come out you just twist a bunch of times it will stay attached to this to this shielding here and just to make a note on this little corner here see this little latching system this shield here actually has like a little arm that that attaches itself underneath this here so remember that when you're taking it out, just keep in mind that there's actually something that's attached here because this is what keeps the shield down. It's not really just the two screws, but also this low like L-shaped type of, you know, latch lock that's actually a part of the shield. So when you're putting this casing back on, just remember the first thing that goes into to securing your, your M.2 properly and keeping the, the heat shield down is to actually put this piece back underneath this lip here. So keep in mind, right? So remember that. So the only screw that does have to go back on is this one here once you once you replace your SSD. And once you do that here, as you can see here, you, you just remove that screw, unscrew this one here. And once you've done that, as you can see here, the heat shield comes off pretty easy. And the thing is, once you remove the heat shield, you're going to notice that the M.2 SSD, your hard drive will also pop up. You know, and as you can see here, it's actually on like a 35, 40 degree angle. Here, I'll show you a different angle. I don't know if I took one. No, I didn't. Um, but, you know, very simple. If you want to take it out, just remove it by pulling it to the left side. And it's a 2280 series SSD, which is very typical for a lot of systems. And all you got to do is just replace it, you know, and put in your new one. You know, use your Windows 10 or 11, you know, uh, you know, USB, you know, uh, you know, uh, imaging that, that you've actually made from Microsoft. And it's very simple. You know, go through the installation, format the hard drive and do the install for Windows. It's pretty simple. I tend to start off with my clients with Windows 10 because a lot of systems are still Windows 10 compatible. The last one I did for the Windows install wasn't. So I actually put in 10. One driver wouldn't go in because when I went to their website to get the driver for it, it was only compatible with Windows 11, which is really odd because a lot of drivers that's compatible Windows 11 environment are usually compatible or can be used in the Windows 10 environment, but it would not give me an option to download the, the drivers. You know, so... Um, Excuse me, guys. I was not expecting the call to come in. So I'll, uh, so going back to that, you know, just remember, right? Just put the, your your drive back in, secure the, uh, you know, the hard drive, and you're good to go. And I also took a picture of the RAM because if you want to know how to remove the memory and upgrade your RAM, you, if you look at these two levers here, one on the right, one on the left, all you do is you pull it to the outside. This will pop up. If you pull this to the right, your RAM will pop up just like this here. As you can see here, it's raised up about 35 degrees. And here I'll show you a different angle here, as you can see. All you do is just pull that out and put in your new ones. And the, the, the good rule of thumb is that when you're upgrading your memory, try not to use two different brands because sometimes you'll get a blue screen of death. Sometimes you'll get restarts, intermittent restarts. It might restart today, not tomorrow or the next day, but you'll sometimes you'll also end up getting these VMM errors, which are virtual memory manager errors. And that's what happens. It's not because of the RAM is bad. It's just because it's not compatible with the other one that's in there. So... When you're upgrading the RAM, the best thing to do is to to get two sticks of RAM. So if you actually have two eight gigs or something, and you want to go to or two sixteens, you want to go to two thirty twos. It, it's it's highly advisable to upgrade to two eighteens. Sorry, two sixteens or two thirty twos if you have sixteens already. If you go to two thirty twos, make sure to buy them in pair because they're usually they're usually sold in sets anyways. And then you, what you do is you keep the original ones. Sometimes keeping them is a good thing to have because if one of your new ones fail. Usually RAM has a lifetime warranty, so I mean you can get it replaced. You know what I mean? But like I said, you know if you're upgrading your RAM, always try to stick with buying a new set, a new pair of, of memory modules instead of upgrading just one stick. You know, and 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 keeping the original one there. You don't want to have two brands. Sometimes it does work. A lot of times it doesn't. But like I said, you know if you do start noticing these BSODs or or weird restarts, intermittent restarts, or VMM errors, virtual memory manager errors, you know your RAM is probably not compatible and it, or it could be bad, you know? Um, 
you know, so I hope that this really helps you guys out. Remember, just to close it back up, you know, very easy disassembly and, and reassembly. So I hope that this video helps you guys out. And please, you know, if you have any comments or any suggestions, just put them in the on in the comments, you know, in the video. And I'll, I'll do my best to reply back to you guys. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe, guys. Have a good day. Cheers.